Hello, and welcome to another PC Games N Hardware Show. I'm Jacob. And I am Dave. And today we are putting these four stock coolers, three from AMD and one from Intel, through their paces to see which one comes out on top, and whether they are actually cut out for the job. We'll also be benchmarking Corsair's H100 V2 alongside to find out how these coolers perform next to one of the best all-in-one liquid coolers around. So, let's get straight to it. So for our Intel test subject, we've picked up one of Intel's most recent stock cooler designs from an 8th gen Coffee Lake 8500 box. This is largely the same fan design Intel has been packaging with its non-K series processors for some time. The design is pretty minimal and is essentially one aluminium block machined into a radial heatsink and a little fan clipped on top. As for our AMD test subjects, we have a few more coolers from the latest 2nd gen Ryzen chips to get through. AMD has included a cooler in the box of every single new processor it has launched. Depending on your choice of CPU, that could be a Wraith Stealth, Spire or Prism. The Wraith Stealth is of a similar ilk as the Intel stock cooler. It's a fairly low profile design with a similar aluminium construction, but unlike the Intel, features a shrouded fan. The Wraith Spire features a doubly thick heatsink and the same fan as the Stealth, but it's the copper contact point on the bottom that should make a big difference in moving heat away from your processor effectively. The Wraith Prism, on the other hand, is a lot more heavy duty and is only available with the flagship 8-core Ryzen 7 2700X. It features direct contact between the processor and the four copper heat pipes that run through its dense aluminium heatsink. There's really going to be no contest between this cooler and the other stock chillers, but just how well this stocky cooler keeps up with the Corsair H100i will be of most interest to us. The Prism also features a near identical fan design as the other two AMD stock coolers. However, it features a see-through construction to make the most of all those lovely RGB LEDs crammed into its chunky shroud. Due to platform constraints, we can't directly compare Intel and AMD stock coolers on the same motherboard. That would be crazy. While we are always up for taping components together to see what happens, we've been told off for spending too much money on tape, and this approach just wasn't quite cutting it. So instead of some slapdash experiment, we are going to use Intel's 8400 and AMD Ryzen 2600. Yes, yeah, the Intel 8400 is a six core chip without hyperthreading enabled that runs at a base clock of 2.8 gigahertz and will boost up to a max turbo of four gigahertz. The AMD Ryzen 2600 is a six core chip with simultaneous multi-threading enabled for a total of 12 threads, which runs at the much higher base clock of 3.4 gigahertz and boosts to the slightly lower 3.9 gigahertz turbo. Differences aside, both these chips run with a TDP of 65 watts. That means that while our scores won't be directly comparable between the two platforms, we will have a somewhat similar gauge of thermal capabilities across all the heatsinks relative to their intended platforms. That means that while we won't be able to compare the Wraith Stealth with the Intel Stock Cooler, we can compare the Wraith Stealth with the platform agnostic Corsair H100 IV2 running with the 2600. The same goes for the Intel Stock Cooler 2. As for the test motherboards, we decided on the ASUS Strix Z370E Gaming and the ASUS Strix X470F Gaming. We also ensured the fan curves were kept at identical values for all the coolers tested. So let's start with the H100i V2. We'll need three temperature values for our comparison. System idle, peak during a Cinebench R15 benchmark, and peak during an X264 benchmark. And our office is incredibly hot right now, which we measured and accounted for in our testing, but if you think our temps are a little bit high, I assure you it's likely down to how our Brits are ill-equipped for heat waves, and not because we forgot to put the thermal paste on. So here are the results. On the Intel system, we were looking at idle temperatures of roughly 35 degrees Celsius. During Cinebench, we hit a peak of 56 degrees, and the same goes for an X264 run, with an identical peak of 56 degrees, even though the chip was under load for a much longer period of time. And on the AMD Ryzen system, it's pretty much the same story. Idle temps plateaued at 35 degrees Celsius, while Cinebench ran at 55 degrees and X264 at a slightly higher 59 degrees. These are pretty similar scores, which is really useful when making a comparison across all of our end results for all the coolers. So the Intel stock cooler performed really admirably at idle, running consistently at a temperature of only 39 degrees C. But when it came to Cinebench and X264, it lost its cool composure. In Cinebench, a peak temp was recorded at 72 degrees. In the X264 benchmark, the CPU was running at 76 degrees. The smallest of the three AMD coolers fared a little worse at idle than Intel stock cooler, posting a temperature of 47 degrees C at idle. During Cinebench R15, the 2600 reached a peak of 72 degrees C and 79 in X264. The taller Wraith Spire managed to keep idle temps under control a little better, eventually leveling out at 41 degrees. 
During Cinebench R15, temps reached 65 degrees, while in X264, the CPO was curtailed at 70 degrees. Considering the Wraith Prism's considerable bulk, we were expecting it to do quite well, and it didn't disappoint. At idle, the 2600 was wrangled down to 38 degrees C. During Cinebench, it kept it cool to 61 degrees C, and even managed a breezy 65 degrees C in the X265 benchmark, and that's over a much longer period of time. So here are all the scores combined, somewhere. Yes, the higher idle temperatures almost across the board for Ryzen seem to be related to a difference in the efficiency and power saving states of Intel's 8400 and AMD's 2600. The Intel chip clocks down to around 600 megahertz lower. But the AMD stop callers were much quieter at least. When it comes to load however, it's a pretty fair fight between the Wraith Stealth and Intel stock cooler. That's to be expected considering both feature similarly lightweight aluminium heatsinks and near identical fans. If anything, the Intel cooler, perhaps surprisingly, actually edged the competition here. When it comes to AMD's bulkier stock coolers however, the red team has Intel overwhelmingly beat. The Wraith Spire keeps the Ryzen chip under control exceptionally well, which is not bad for a little air cooler you get free in the box. But it's the Wraith Prism, unsurprisingly, that takes the crown. It's kind of wild that this cooler is actually included in the box with the 2700X, considering how well it performed compared to the much more expensive Corsair liquid cooler. It's more expensive because that one's free. <laughs> of course, the Ryzen 2600 isn't really pushing either of these coolers to their limits, which is where a bulkier cooler really makes its mark. Plus, if you want to get really stuck into some heavy duty overclocking, a dual tower air cooler or liquid cooler may be more sufficient. If you've liked what you've seen today, then give us a like and subscribe below and drop us a comment if you have any other hardware you'd like to see go head to head in the benchmarking arena. Also, make sure to visit us over at PCGamesN.com where you'll find more from both of us and all the people behind us. They've all, they've all gone. Oh, they're off playing Mario Kart again. Yeah. Anyways, bye. See ya. <laughs>